Hello everyone. So in the previous lesson, we introduced ourselves to how to name organic molecules and we, we only focused on the alkanes. So for example, if I give you a molecule like this, step one would be to count the number of carbons in the main chain, which would be one, two, three, four, five. You would then go to number five, which is pent. So you would write down pent and then you would have to say, okay, is this an alcohol, an aldehyde? No, it's an alkane. So we end the word with so this is called pentane. And then if we look at this one, well, we can see that this is an alkane, with, which has one, two, three. So then you'd go to three. So that would be prop. And then because it's an alkane, you just call it propane. You see, so the prop is going to be the same for every single kind of molecule. It's this part at the end that's going to change depending on whether it is a alkane, alkene, alcohol, or any one of the nine that we've looked at. Okay, so here's the next one. So we can do this in various orders, but one of the nice things is, is just to count the number of carbons in the main chain and then just write down the word that you see from your table, which is prop. Then we see that this is a what kind of molecule? Is it an alcohol, alkyne? No, it's a double bond, so it's an alkene. So we're going to end it off with the word ene like this. Okay, that's one way to do it. Now, another way that your teacher might show you, and some teachers show you both, and then you can decide is I prefer this one that I'm busy showing you now. You have to, and, and many of you are thinking, but Kevin, why would I want to do that when I can just write propene? That's going to make more sense very soon, you'll see now. So you want to show them on which carbon the double bond exists. So we always name it, we're always going to label this chain from the side closest to where the double bond starts, if that makes sense, or where the double bond is. So if we started it here, then your double bond would start at carbon number two. If, however, you started from the left-hand side, then your double bond starts at carbon number one. And so we always want to make sure that those numbers are as low as possible. And so this double bond is on carbon number one. And so we can call this prop one in. Now, why did I say you can also say propene? Because sometimes you can't have a double bond anywhere else. If I had the double bond over here and not here, well, then it's still on carbon number one because then you would name it from this side. And so propene can only have one kind of combination. And that's why we can simply call it propene if you want. Or if you want to be more specific, which we'll have to do with all the other molecules, is use that one. And this is why I like this one because it fits more in line with how we name all the other type of things. So let me give you an example of where you have to use that naming process. First step is always to just count the number of carbons and so that's five so straight away we can go to there and just write down the word pent then we've got to look at on which carbon is the double bond because now there is a lot more options I hope you really understand that in the last molecule that I did with pentene I mean propene it can only be on carbon number one because if I draw it the other way around if I did this instead then this is still on carbon number one because you always have to name it from the side that is closest to the double bond, so then this would be carbon number one. And so either way you look at this, it's propene. You can't get prop 2 in, for example. Please make sure that you understand that. That is actually very important, that you understand why I can simply say propene, because people around the world, if they see propene, they know what it looks like. Whereas with this one that I'm busy doing, that double bond could be on a few different places. But let's see, so we name it from the side that is closest to the double bond, so that'll be this side, so that'll be carbon number one, carbon number two. Okay, so on carbon number two, we have a double bond, and so we end it with in. If I had just said pentene, then what scientists around the world automat automatically assume is that it's on carbon number one, so then it would be the same as pent one in, and that would be a molecule that looks like this. See, so it's on the first carbon, whereas this one is on carbon number two. Remember that it is incorrect if you name it from the right-hand side, because then the double bond would be on carbon number three, but you should always name it from the side that is closest to the double bond. So here we have a one, two, three, four, so that's going to be T or but, and then it's on carbon number one that the double bond is happening. So when it's on carbon number one, it's optional whether you want to write it as butene or like that. Okay, so just see what your teacher does. Both of them are correct. So no matter what you do in the exam, it's going to be marked correctly. I just like this one because it, otherwise we always have to remember, oh, now I can write it like this. 
So it's better to just stick to the original method because then it works for all of them. So here we have the alkyne. If I was you, I'd pause the video right now and see if you can guess how the naming is going to work. But what's going to happen is we're first going to see that there is one, two, three, four carbons in the main chain. So that's always going to be a BUT. Then on carbon number one, two, or you could name it from the side because it's symmetrical, we're going to have a triple bond. And so your molecule is going to look like that or your name. What's very important is that between any word and any number, we always have to put a line like that. Okay, and then here we have a number, here we have a word, so you must put a line like that. Okay, so now you guys know how to comfortably name alkanes. Those are easy. Those are just like pent -ane. You don't have to tell them where the single bond is. Why? Because the single bonds are everywhere on an alkane. For a double, for an alkene, you have to say where the double bond is. And then for an alkyne, you have to say where the triple bond is. And then for an alkane, you end it with A-N-E. For an alkene, it's E-N-E. -E. And for an alkyne, it's Y-N-E. Now we're going to look at how the naming of halo alkanes works. So remember halo alkane? Halo because there's a halogen. And then the alkane because it is an alkane. The rest of it is an alkane. You must think of this as an alkane. And then it's just got a C-L attachment. It's not a CL with a alkane attachment, if that makes sense. So what we have is one, two, three carbons in the main chain. So that's prop, if you look on the table. Then it is an alkane, so we just end it like that, propane. And then we tell the, well, we explain to the examiner on which carbon is the CL. If you named this thing from the right, then the CL is on carbon number three. If you named it from the left, then it would be on carbon number one. So we choose that one due to the fact that you want to choose the lowest number. So then what we're going to do, so we're not going to add it at the end here, because we know that this is already a propane. It's going to be added in the front. On carbon number one, there is a chlorine. So we're going to say chloropropane. Okay, so I know we've just stepped things up, but that's absolutely fine if it feels a bit uncomfortable right now. That's normal. Uh, we're just going to practice it a bit and then it becomes normal. So here's another one. Step one is always to find the longest continuous chain. And so that's one, two, three, four, five carbon. So that's over here. So that's pent. That's why the table's really nice because it's the backbone of every single naming or for, for any molecule. You're always going to use the table first. Then we look for, okay, this is an alkane. So we can just put pentane. And then it's got a bromine molecule as a attachment. So I hope you guys are starting to see the pattern. This part comes from the table. This part is the homologous series that it belongs to. Okay, you know, like alcohol, alkene, alkyne, halo alkane, things like that. But with halo alkanes and alkanes, we just end it with ane. Then if there are any attachments, we add them to the front. So it's attachments or branches, whichever one you want to choose. Then it's the table. And then it's the homologous, like the type of molecule that it is. So it's attachments, then it's the table, and then it's the homologous. So I know teachers use like these weird things, like, I don't know, I couldn't remember, like prefix and, um, I don't know, suffix and antonyms. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. But we just want to keep life simple and just learn it like a normal human. So attachments, that's what we're going to add on to the main chain. Then we're going to use the table over here, and then homologous. Homologous is the type of molecule, such as an alcohol, alkane, alkene. So let's start this one again. So the table, we we'll always start there. So that's going to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is pent. And then the homologous, well, I know it's a halo alkane, but it, it gets the ending ane, and then the attachments, we'll look at this one. Now that's on carbon number 2, because if you named it, this way, that would be carbon number four. So then we say a two to tell the person that it's on carbon number two. And then what do we have? We have a bromo. So because it's bromine, we call it bromo if it's an attachment. If it's chlorine, we call it chloro. If it's fluorine, we call it fluoro. And if it's iodine, we call it iodo. And so then between any number and any word, you must put a line. Now, the reason I call it a line is I always forget if that's a dash or a hyphen. So, when my years of tutoring, I've just always called it a line, just in case I get that part incorrect. <laughs> so, there we go. So, that's how you name that one over there. And so, that's it for this video, guys, just to keep it nice and short. In the next lesson, I'm going to be doing little tests to see whether we are all 
up to scratch with alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and halo alkanes. From that point onwards, we will then move on to the next type of molecules, which will be alcohols and all the others. Thank you for watching.